I just want to thank you all for joining us on this Advent journey with the Holy Family. This will be the third and final of these Advent meditations that we are offering to the Center for Ignatian Spirituality housed here at St. Ignatius Loyal Parish in Sacramento, California. Let us begin as we begin all things with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Almighty God, be with us in these moments. Help us to hear your words and envision the narrative of the story of our salvation. Let us be entirely open to your promptings and grant us the grace to see you as you wish to be revealed to us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The past two meditations, past two weeks, I will read through the scripture once and then revisit it, reading it a second time, interspersed with questions to help facilitate your meditation and the composition of place. I invite you to be present to the moment, to trust. Rest your heart in God, the Beloved. It's okay if you find yourself falling asleep, because that is prayer too, as St. Joseph can attest. So calm your heart, calm your breath, sink into your seat, close your eyes, and open your ears to the unfolding of a story that happened long ago. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph, and the child lying in the manger. And what joy, what joy must they have felt, all of them together. Hmm. So allow me to read this passage one more time. Listen once more to the story and enter into the narrative, orient your thoughts and your hearts toward what Mary and Joseph might be thinking and feeling or perhaps even experiencing, or maybe one of the angels or the shepherds, maybe someone else. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own homes and towns to be registered. What does that decree mean practically for the people? How many were on the move? How large an exodus? It must have been it must have been a lot of people. And the long threads of dirt roads must have been clogged with riders on their horses or their donkeys, their chariots, with oxen and mule drawn carts, and a lot of people walking. 
everyone is moving and everyone is talking all at once. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. And among this great throng of people, your eyes search the crowd and you see one couple in particular. There's a man walking beside a donkey, and on that donkey is a heavily pregnant woman, his wife. And on everybody, all the other couples with their children, the old people, the young, the rich, the poor, it's this couple and their journey that you feel called to follow. And at first they're in the thick of a multitude, but as they all walk this long dusty road, each and every village, more people break off from this main group until all that's left is a few other women and men walking near to this couple. And it's Joseph and Mary. Then they suddenly arrive at the outskirts of the city of Bethlehem. City. I mean, it looks more like a simple country village. Dusk is closing in fast, and night is quick on its heels. And you can see the long shadows cast by Joseph and Mary as they slowly plod their way into Bethlehem. Suddenly Mary reaches out to grab Joseph's shoulder. He looks back at her, and looking into her face, he sees that it is time. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. Joseph is thinking where to go. Where can we find a safe place to hunker down and make ready? He knocks on the door of the first house. The door opens a crack. Light from a fire barely escapes into the growing darkness outside. And before Joseph can say anything, the door closes and he hears the latch being drawn. So he guides the donkey and his wife to the next house to the next. And finally he comes upon an old woman filling up a bucket with water from the village well. And she doesn't immediately dismiss them when she sees Mary's condition because her heart is full of compassion and concern. But her home is too small. She tells them about the barnyard at the back of her house. She can make it comfortable. She can make it as clean as can be. She'll meet them back there with hot water and dry linens she does. And Joseph trusts her. And so he leads Mary there. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Watch her holding her newly born baby in her arms and he's smiling. Smiling up at her, smiling up at Joseph, smiling up at the old woman. Joseph is there holding her hand, hovering over them all, ready to do whatever needs to be done to assist. And just, just as you want to stay with this scene, you feel called, you feel called away. You walk away, a little way off and away from the barnyard, your eye passes across the dirt streets, across low shrubberies and sand and small brooks with their tr trickling waters hear and smell the sheep before you can even see them. Their little feet pushing against each other and bells tinkling to signal their presence. And you're standing near a herd of sheep. And in the darkness, you can just make out the small campfires of the shepherds. Suddenly, you're out in the fields, on the outskirts of Bethlehem. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the night is pitch black except for those little fires. And in their faint light, you see figures and shadows of people bedding down. You hear the crackling of the wood, the faint sound of the bells and the sheep, and the sheep moving together, pushing each other on the dry ground. And then, and then a bright light. Out of nowhere, it's so bright, it's like daytime. The shepherds are startled. The sheep are startled. You are startled. Your heart picks up its pace, and you're scared because you don't know what's happening. No one seems to. Voices are raised. People sit up who were sleeping only seconds ago. Some have jumped up to protect their sheep or to calm them. 
Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. And with those words, those four simple words, you find that you are no longer afraid. That you are curious. What is this? What is happening? And the voice continues. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. And the night sky is a fire with light and sound and voices whose song the song makes you cry because it's so perfect. And when the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And you follow them. You go with them as they run into the town, run to the barnyard, and you look and see what they saw. You see a mother and a father and a small baby, all of them sitting and laying on clean hay. The farm animals are gathered around them, watching them also. There's an older woman there. Deep within you, you feel a new emotion unfolding. No longer is it just curiosity, right? It's a deep sense of peace and of safety and of being loved being loved. As we slowly end our meditation, we take one last look at them and at the face of these young parents. And Mary turns and sees you and the look she gives you is only for you. What do her eyes say to you? What do they speak to the depths of your being? She overjoyed that you're there too. Does she look tired and understand how tired you are also? Is there a connection, a shared joy, a shared thrill of new motherhood? Walking away from the barnyard, away from this family, away from the shepherds and the animals and the sheep that have somehow followed their shepherds, with one deep breath and a long exhale, Open your eyes and find yourself back where you started. If you'd like to continue your prayer, you might desire to think further on these following questions. Who were you in the narrative? Were you an onlooker? Were you one of the participants? Were you Mary or Joseph? The woman at that well, a shepherd, an angel? What feelings did the meditation prompt in you? What feelings are you left with? What words did Mary speak to you in the depths of your heart as you gave that holy family one last look? This is our very last Advent guided meditation for this year, 2022. So let us together close this journey with a prayer. Lord God, in these past three weeks we've journeyed with the holy family celebrating their joys with them. We ask that you bless and protect us and those we love. We ask that you, who are the light of the world, be a lamp to our feet as we walk ever and always towards you. Place our fears and all our longings before us. We hand over our hopes and dreams to you and ask that you sanctify all of it, all of who and what we are, because you love all things that you have created and we are your unique creations. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And from all of us at the Center for Ignatian Spirituality here in Sacramento, California, may God grant you a very Merry Christmas, and we wish you a blessed New Year. <laughs>